Good morning from Berlin, the legendary capital of Germany. Today I'll take you on a little tour of this massive city and showcase some of its highlights. So let's go! Right, so the first building that we're going to see today is the German Parliament building. It was first built in 1884, but then in 1933 a fire broke out. And at the time the Nazis, who had just come to power, blamed that fire on the communists. But today most people agree that that fire was a false flag operation to consolidate power by the Nazis. And yeah, the building was completely restored in the 1990s and today houses the German parliament, the Bundestag. And you can also visit the building, but you need to book that long in advance and you can only visit on specific days. And yeah, no time for that today, so let's continue. So we are right in the political center of Germany here. The parliament building is over there and the Chancellor's office is over there. And yeah, the history of Berlin is very long and eventful and I'm just gonna give you a few details. In the Middle Ages, Berlin was the capital of the Kingdom of Prussia and then it became the capital of unified Germany in 1871. And after World War I, when the German Empire had fallen, Berlin became the capital of the Weimar Republic. And then after that, Nazi Germany and then after World War II, Berlin became the capital of East Germany because of course Germany was divided into West Germany and East Germany. And the capital of West Germany was actually Bonn, not Berlin. And yeah, when Germany reunified after the Cold War, Berlin became the capital once again. This right here is the Unter den Linden Street which is one of the most famous avenues here in Berlin and the Brandenburg Gate is right over there. I'm gonna go there now but first I wanted to give you a bit of context because I have probably chosen the worst possible time to come to Berlin. Let me explain. First it is insanely cold right now. This morning it was minus 14 Celsius and right now we have about minus 8. And the second thing is that there is a massive farmer protest going on right now. So there is actually a big parade over there behind the Brandenburg Gate. I will show that to you later. But yeah, the farmers are organizing blockades in Berlin and in Germany. And now the last thing why this is a terrible moment to come to Berlin is that the Deutsche Bahn, the German national train company, is on strike right now. So not a lot of trains are going out of here and that could become a major problem tomorrow when I want to leave. But we'll see. So Brandenburg Gate, one of the symbols of Berlin and Germany. It was built in 1791 by Prussian King Frederick William II and it was built to celebrate the suppression of a Dutch revolt. And yeah, today this area is very, very touristy, but that is normal. This is historic territory after all. All right, now we are gonna walk through the Brandenburg Gate here and then I am gonna show you the massive farmer protest. And yeah, I had no idea that this was going on I actually just read about it yesterday. So here's the farmers protest. This is not something I was expecting to see to be honest. Here in Berlin there are hundreds of tractors blockading many main roads here. But there's nobody inside right now. So I guess they just put their tractors here and leave them there. Some have the engine running. So the sign says, anderen stopft ihr den Kragen, uns wollt ihr verjagen. And then there is a traffic light. And the traffic light is a symbol for the government here because of the colors of the three parties. And the sign there, it actually said, 
other people get a lot of money basically and us you want to chase us out so that's not the literal translation but that's more or less what it means also I should clarify for those who don't know that I am not German I am from Luxembourg and even though my accent might be similar German is not my native language and Luxembourg and Germany don't have the same political issues and I also don't really follow German news. Anyways, let's continue our tour of Berlin here. I'm now going to show you a very important but very dark place. This is the memorial to the murdered Jews of Europe and yeah, you know the significance. 2711 stones to commemorate the Holocaust. And yeah, I'm gonna go get a few shots and show you the monument from up close. But I am gonna remain silent because this is a place of remembrance and not a place for vlogging, to be honest. Alright guys, that was the Holocaust Memorial and yeah, this morning when I started the video I said to myself, don't just talk about World War II because there are so many other places to see here that are not related to World War II but I have to show you one more place and that place is this parking lot right here. Now, you might be wondering, why are you showing us a parking lot? And yeah, the reason that I'm showing you this parking lot is because this is exactly where Hitler's Führerbunker was. So yeah, right under my feet here is where Hitler committed suicide in 1945. And that's why you have all the tour groups here, because it is just a parking lot at the end of the day. Alright guys, enough about World War II now. But you know that I am very interested in history and the Second World War in particular. So yeah, I like to visit these places and learn about them. But anyways, now let's go walk the streets of Berlin here. So Berlin is actually a city of contrasts. It was obviously completely bombed to the ground and destroyed in 1945. And there really aren't that many historic streets. There are some really famous buildings that were rebuilt, like the Reichstag and the Berlin Cathedral but a lot of Berlin looks like this very uninspiring and it has a lot of beautiful spots but then the city as a whole is really not the most beautiful place in the world anyways now I'm gonna warm up and maybe get some food in the mall of Berlin here minus 7 in the evening it was minus 14 this morning that is some proper winter weather Quite a fancy mall here. To be honest, I came inside mostly to warm up, but I might get some food. Let's see. Here is the food court. Quite a lot of choice. Arabic, burgers, bubble tea. This might be a good place to get some food. There is Indian over there. Many different cuisines. Here we have vegan burgers. Here we have Turkish, I guess. So yeah guys, this is the Mall of Berlin here and to be honest, I mostly came here because it is so cold outside. But yeah, the food was very decent, even though it was quite expensive, which is to be expected of course. Anyways, let's continue. So as you probably know, during the Cold War, Germany was split in two communist East Germany and capitalist West Germany and not only Germany but also the city of Berlin was split in two 
So West Berlin was not part of the communist German Democratic Republic, but it was surrounded by this communist state. And until 1961, there was no physical barrier. So lots of East Germans just fled to the West via West Berlin, because they could basically just take a train from one side of Berlin to the other, and then they were in West Germany and they were out of the Eastern Bloc. And then in 1961, everything changed. The communist German Democratic Republic built a wall and that wall created a physical barrier between East and West Berlin. Now, there were a few checkpoints where people could cross. And this is one of the checkpoints here. So yeah, the checkpoint is right here you would have had American border guards in here and then over there started East Germany. So as you can see here, there is nothing left of the actual wall, but there is a temporary panorama exhibition where you can immerse yourself into the past. So let's head in there. The ticket was 11 euros, which is not cheap to be honest for an exhibition. But yeah, let's see what it's like. just went into this wall panorama exhibition there really interesting and super impressive and the artist who created it was an East German who lived in the GDR and he really wanted to showcase the situation that East Berliners faced during that time with the wall and yeah the exhibition also explains the history of the wall how and why it was built and also how it came down in 1989. So yeah, this is a temporary exhibition. If you are in Berlin and it is still there, definitely come check it out. Even though 11 euros might seem like a bit much for an exhibition, it is definitely worth it. And here we have the Trabi world. The Trabi or Trabant was the car that the German Democratic Republic produced. So yeah, if you lived in East Germany, you could drive this and you can go on a tour with an original Trabi today. All right, guys, it is getting dark now. And to be honest, I am freezing to death. So I'm going to call it a day and then I'll see you guys tomorrow. Good morning, guys. It is now day two here in Berlin and we are on the banks of the river Spree the main river that flows through Berlin and today I'm going to show you some other parts of the city that we didn't get to see yesterday. So let's go. So over there we have the Hauptbahnhof, the central train station and then the Spree River right here and yeah this part is very modern and just to give you a bit of orientation the parliament building and then the Holocaust Memorial are over there on the other side. And yeah, this area right here is very modern. There are lots of companies like PwC, which is over there, and then hotels and apartment buildings. But obviously not all of Berlin is like that. A lot of areas are much older and then others don't look anything like this. Now, as we are walking here, let me quickly show you my accommodation as well. So I'm staying at the Ibis Hauptbahnhof, which is, you know, a budget hotel. I've stayed in quite a few of those before and they are generally clean and comfortable. And this one is no exception. But the reason why I chose this is the location. It is located right in front of the Hauptbahnhof Central Station. So yeah, you are very well connected there and I am paying 60 euros a night, which, you know, is not super cheap, but okay for a Western European capital. Berlin has gotten quite a bit more expensive in recent years. So the last time I was here was five years ago and I remember it being quite cheap. So it used to be quite a bit cheaper than cities in West Germany, like Cologne, Düsseldorf, Frankfurt and so on. And now it seems to be very similar in terms of pricing. So yeah, it is still not crazy expensive, especially when you compare it to like London or Paris. You will not find a hotel room like that for 60 euros in London. Anyways, we are now continuing on the banks of the Spree River here. Over there you can see some 
historic buildings that survived. But yeah, most of Berlin isn't all that historic because this city had to be completely rebuilt in 1945. So you do see a lot of 70s architecture here, but then also a lot of modern stuff post 2010, because Berlin has had quite a lot of economic growth in the last 10, 15 years. So here on this bridge, you can actually see it quite well. Berlin has all these massive avenues, and then these buildings, really big ones, which are from the 70s or 80s and then a lot of modern ones as well it actually really has its charm but it's not beautiful in the conventional sense over there is the museum island and the tv tower in the background that's where i want to go so let's head over there i have to say that there really aren't that many people around not just here but everywhere i've been so far and I think that the main reason is the train strike because you cannot get out of Berlin by train today. The metro is working and the buses are working and also the trams. But all the S-Bahn trains, including the ones going to the airport, aren't working. So getting out of here is quite difficult right now and that will be a big problem for me today. But we'll see how that pans out. So the museum island is right over there and there are five museums on this island. The Altes Museum, Old Museum, Neues Museum, New Museum, the Bode Museum, which is the one I just filmed, and then the Pergamon and the Old National Gallery, Alte National Gallery. And I have actually been to all five of them and they are all worth a visit. All right, we are now at the stunning Berlin Cathedral here, Berliner Dom, and there have been many churches at this site throughout the centuries, but the current building dates from 1905. That's when it was finished under Kaiser Wilhelm II, and it was very heavily damaged in World War II during the Allied bombing campaign of Berlin, but then it was completely renovated in the 1970s according to the original design, even though some parts of the design were simplified. I am now walking up to the viewing platform of Berlin Cathedral and yeah you have to walk up quite a lot of steps to get there but yeah let's see if the view is worth it I hope so oh yes that is quite a view here This is a pretty amazing viewpoint because you are walking around the dome of Berlin Cathedral so you get 360 degree views over the German capital and the entrance fee is 10 euros and you have to climb a lot of steps but on a clear day like this it is definitely worth it. Alright guys I am now sitting on the terrace of the Cathedral Cafe right on the river here. Got myself some espresso. I now have to find a way to get out of here because I am booked on a train tonight but the DB is on strike and even though my train is not DB they are also affected and it has been cancelled. So yeah I'll have to find a way to get out of Berlin without taking a train and getting to the airport is also pretty difficult. So yeah first I'll have to get back to the hotel and then peruse my options. But yeah that is the end of today's video and as always thanks very much for watching and see you in the next one. Goodbye.